Hello, everybody. It's Professor Barth, Associate Professor of History at Arizona State University. So I've been waiting to make this video for a very long time, for several months now. I've prepared, read a lot of reports, studied it extensively, worked out in my own mind what I think about this issue exactly. But today I'm going to address central bank digital currencies, also known as CBDCs. This is one of the hottest topics right now, maybe the hot topic among monetary policymakers. And at the present moment, it's one of the more frequent questions that I get. Um, Professor Barth, what do you think about CBDCs? So I'm gonna address that in this video today, but it is, it is a big topic. Um, currently there are 87 different countries around the world who are exploring the adoption of a CBDC including four of the world's largest central banks, that's the ECB in Europe, the Bank of Japan, the Bank of England, and of course, the Federal Reserve here in the United States. Um, this is a, a report that was issued last September. And you see on there, all the leading uh, central banks, financial institutions involved the Swiss National Bank, um, just a couple months ago, India announced that they are that they will introduce a digital rupee by the end of 2023. Of course, China has uh, already begun to roll out a programmable CBDC. In fact, already many millions of Chinese have used a digital yuan. So right now in this country, there's a debate going on, and we'll see that here in a moment, on whether or not the United States, via the Federal Reserve, also ought to issue a CBDC. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to, I'm going to, I'll begin by describing what CBDC is, why it's, how it's different from cryptocurrency, how it's different from the other digital forms of money that we use, like our debit cards and our credit cards. And I'm gonna look into, as fairly as I can, the purported benefits of CBDC. And then we're, I'm gonna look at the potential dangers. But let me just um, say right here at the outset, um, the reason why I believe this is one of the most important videos I've made um, the more I've studied this, and I've studied it quite extensively in the last couple months in preparation for this video, um, the more I am persuaded, just absolutely persuaded, that the adoption of a CBDC in the United States would represent an immense danger to American liberty. And so I'm just going to declare it at the outset. I've got my view here. Um, my 100%, 100% uh, decided, okay, it, even you could say vehement opposition to the adoption of a CBDC in the United States. I'm going to explain why in this video, but in short, a CBDC in the United States will, has a potential to, and almost undoubtedly will, would, increase in and when i say increase i mean vastly increase the power of the federal government and of the central bank over your private life as an american citizen even if the initial rollout of a cb cbdc was limited in scope even if it were uh uh you know very modest in the beginnings a cbdc in the united states would provide the infrastructure for the total control of the federal government in conjunction with the financial oligarchs at the Federal Reserve, what President Andrew Jackson called the money power, it would provide the infrastructure for the total control of the federal government and the Federal Reserve over your private life and individual choices in the marketplace, but not only in the marketplace, but also in your social life. So that, that's why this is so important. I mean, we need to get this message out here. We do not want a CBDC in the United States. And very few Americans are, are talking, are, are um, even though it's a hot topic right now, 
you go to your average American on the street, they've never heard of CBDC. But there's a real chance that CBDC could be adopted here. We need to get this word out. And so I want each and every one of you, if, you, if you're on social media, share this video. Let's get this out, okay? But I'm going to try to present things as fairly as I can here, okay? So let's start. What is CBDC? So a central bank digital currency is, as the name suggests, a digital form of currency issued by the central bank. It is pegged to the value of the central bank's fiat currency. And so if you were to have a, a Fed coin, one, a $1 Fed coin would be equal to $1. Uh, it would be $1. It would be equivalent. It would be pegged to the value of that currency. Now, like cash and unlike commercial bank money, digital bank money, a CBDC is a liability of the, cent of the central bank. So if you look at this um, paper currency here, it's $20 bill. What do you see on the $20 bill? Federal Reserve Note. Federal Reserve Note. This $20 note is a liability of the Federal Reserve. Compare that to your debit card. Um, this is not a liability of the Federal Reserve. It's a liability of the commercial bank. It's a liability of your bank. And so there's a distinction there, and it's not insignificant. More on that in a moment. Um, a CBDC would be a liability of the Federal Reserve, of the central bank. And then the other, um, another feature of a CBDC, it would be stored on a digital wallet. And a digital wallet would usually be on your phone, but it could also be on your computer. And you could, um, you could have the same wallet on multiple devices. You would uh, go into, go, when you are in the checkout line with the merchant or um, at, the, uh, at the shop, the checkout counter, the, um, the cashier would display a QR code. You would take your phone, scan the QR code, maybe punch the amount on your phone, and then press pay. And, and, and you are done. The other thing about CBDC that's very, very, very important, and there's so much confusion here, but I've got to emphasize it. A CBDC is not a cryptocurrency. It's not a cryptocurrency. It's not a cryptocurrency. All right. There's a lot, like I said, a whole lot of confusion out there. People just assume that, oh, it's a central bank cryptocurrency. No, 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 no. Very, very uh, important distinction between a CBDC and a cryptocurrency. CBDCs are not cryptocurrency. Um, unlike cryptocurrencies, a CBDC is traceable and programmable in a way that no cryptocurrency can, can, can operate. Um, more on the, on the traceability and programmability of CBDC a little later in this video, but that is so important, okay? so important and vital to understanding CBDC, the programmability of the CBDC and the traceability of the CBDC. CBDC is a big, a great distinction from cryptocurrencies. Also, cryptocurrencies are built on a blockchain or also known as a decentralized ledger technology. And in a blockchain, a decentralized ledger operates on a peer-to-peer -peer network which eliminates a need for a, uh, uh, a central authority to validate transactions, to check for manipulation or fraud. Um, a CBDC would use a centralized ledger, centralized ledger technology in which settlement and clearing would, would go through the central bank or through whatever a private tech company contracts with, with the central bank. That also allows the central bank then to program the CBDC and, um, and monitor it and so on. So that's another distinction from cryptocurrency. Um, obviously, unlike cryptocurrency, CBDC is controlled um, by a single centralized authority. It is uh, new units, new currency units are created at the discretion of the central bank. Many cryptocurrencies are on it based on an algorithm. This would not be based on an algorithm. It would the central the Federal Reserve Board, just like it does today with the money supply, would have complete discretion over the creation of, of new units. 
Um, and then obviously another distinction from cryptocurrency, it would be uh, legal tender in public and private payments, just as um, any other, uh, just like uh, cash um, or any other dollar is today. And another distinction that advocates of a CBDC will point to, in theory, a CBDC should be uh, more stable than a cryptocurrency, should be less volatile than a cryptocurrency. And of course, if you've been paying attention to the markets in the last few weeks, crypto has been quite volatile, all right? Um, and so there's an argument here, oh, well, CBDC would be, there would be a built-in stability there, there would be less volatile because it would be backed by the good faith and credit of the United States and the central bank. It would immediately have far more credibility than, than any cryptocurrency, the, its proponents say. So <clears throat> another thing I want to address, a feature of CBDC, that I want to return to, that I already hinted at, is a distinction between CBDC and the digital dollars that we use today. Because you may be tempted to ask, well, isn't the dollar already, already digitized? And you would be correct. We're already using digital dollars. In fact, actually, the estimate is that there are over 18 trillion digital dollars already at, in the current day in, in, in existence, 18 trillion digital dollars. And, and we see um, our checking accounts, electronic balances, um, debit cards, credit cards, mobile payment and transfer services like PayPal, Venmo. Um, but these digital dollars are again, liabilities on that particular private financial institution. Okay, whether it's your bank, credit card company, mobile payment service, whatever, it's a liability on that institution. For me, I bank with MidFirst. I like, um, the, I try to stick with the, uh, the smaller, more um, regional banks, but whichever bank you use, it is a liability on that bank, not on the Federal Reserve. Um, we forget this because d digital bank money is so ubiquitous, but actually all digital bank money is, when you use your debit card, by the way, this isn't my debit card, obviously, uh, if you look closely at the, uh, the words on the card. Um, if you use a debit card or if you use digital bank money, all that is is a promise from the bank to redeem on demand that dollar, that so-called di that dollar, that digital dollar to redeem at any point on demand that dollar for one dollar in in cash in u.s currency um but it's not cash it's not it's actually in a technical sense it's not u.s currency it's simply redeemable in u.s currency um this is u.s currency physical cash and cash is cash is a liability of the central bank this is not, this is. Um, so physical cash is a liability of the Federal Reserve, but physical cash, once it enters circulation, unlike a CBDC, it's entirely anonymous, it's untraceable. And so, you know, critics of cash will sometimes point to if, if you're laundering money or if you're, if you're involved in illicit activity drug dealing or whatever, you're not going to use your debit card, you're going to use cash, right? Because it's, it has that anonymity about it. Um, but the use of cash is rapidly declining. Um, compare the num uh, compare, compare the stats in 2012 to those in 2020. In 2012, cash was used in 40% of transactions. In 2020, it was in only 19% of transactions. And I reckon that COVID, if we had the latest, latest numbers, is quite a bit less than 19%. In 2012, 12% of transactions by value utilize cash. In 2020, we're down to 6%, 6%. And the latest um, numbers I've seen, and this is a little different from the, from the stats on the screen here, but of, of the current, dollars in existence, only 3% are, are cash. Only 3% of current dollars exist in cash. So cash is declining. 
Um, we use we use money now primarily in commercial bank form. Um, the other direct liability of the Federal Reserve, member banks at the Federal Reserve have accounts at the Fed. And so the reserve balances of member banks at the Fed, that too is a liability of the central bank. But it's basically physical cash, which is in decline, and these uh, reserve balances of member banks. A CBDC, if adopted, would create a new liability of the central bank like cash, like cash. And this liability of the central bank could function independently of the commercial banking system. Obviously, if you use your credit card, if you use your debit card, the com commercial bank or the financial institution operates as an intermediary of sorts. With cash or with the CBDC, you don't necessarily have to utilize or go through a commercial banking system. And so CBDC is, is quite different from digital bank money in that respect. And so now the question comes to, what about a Fed coin? What about a Fed coin? Um, and the Fed is, is definitely looking into this. Um, Federal Reserve was involved in a number of reports last year on CBDC. Um, the uh, Leo, uh, Leo Brainard, who, is, uh, who has been on the Board of Governors since 2014, she was recently nominated by Biden to serve as Vice Chair of the Federal Reserve. She's written a number of papers and given a number of talks on CBDCs, and she's a big fan. I mean, you can tell, right? She's a really big proponent of CBDC. She's the Vice Chair of the Federal Reserve. There are other members within the Federal Reserve, including a sitting member uh, or a sitting governor on the Board of Governors who are skeptical, if not outright hostile to CBDC. And so the Federal Reserve at the present moment is divided on the question of CBDC. But in January of this year, the Federal Reserve issued its first uh, discussion paper examining the pros and cons of a potential CBDC. This was the first time that the Federal Reserve had embarked on such a project alone. The previous papers were done in conjunction with other central banks. And so Federal Reserve has taken a very serious look at this. And then in March of this year, President Biden issued an executive order requiring federal agencies to look into this idea and to study the idea of a CBDC So, and, and then to issue a formal report. So that will be coming down the pike. So the Biden administration is also looking into this in conjunction with Jerome Powell at the Federal Reserve. Um, a couple things on the adoption before we look into the pros and cons of a CBDC. Uh, the Federal Reserve has insisted in these initial reports that they have no plans to replace cash or paper currency. They simply want to expand the number of payment options. Okay, well, um, we'll see about that. But right now they're saying, well, this won't replace cash. We'll still have cash. We'll still have paper currency. Also, the Federal Reserve has said that it would not proceed with the issuance of a CBDC without authorization from Congress. Okay, ideally in the form of some like uh, specific authorizing law. So it appears that the Federal Reserve will not be able to, um, on its own, unilaterally announce the adoption of CBDC. They would have to have the support or a law from Congress. Another misconception about a potential Fed coin um, under the plans being discussed individuals would not have accounts with the Federal Reserve. Um, a lot of people think, oh, a CBDC means I would have, I would bank with the Federal Reserve. I'd have a bank account at the Fed and that's not how it would work. You wouldn't bank with the Federal Reserve. Um, you would uh, probably acquire your CBDC either directly from the government um, in form of stimulus payments or, any, or, uh, or a tax refund, or you would um, obtain CBDC from, from your um, commercial bank. 
Um, also, digital wallets under the plans being discussed wouldn't be operated by the Federal Reserve. It'd probably be um, operated by different private um, institutions, private digital wallets. Okay, so what are the purported benefits of CBDC? What do the advocates of CBDC, what are their arguments? How are, how are they selling CBDC? Why should we adopt CBDC? And this, the next few minutes, we'll take a look at this. Um, one argument that's brought forward is that, the, um, that you still have a number of Americans, I can't remember the exact percentage, it's small, but it's not insignificant. So I have a number of Americans who are unbanked. Okay, they don't have bank accounts. And so there's an argument out there that the unbanked should also have access to digital forms of money without having to open up a bank account, without having to use a debit card or a, or a credit card. And that this also would um, do away with the need for <laughs> the institutions uh, you see here on the screen, um, that this would be a way to reach those sectors of the population. More often than not, however, the proponents of CBDC will point to, uh, to its programmability as a benefit. And here are some examples of, of how the CBDC could be programmed for good, say its um, proponents. For example, a CBDC, you could program the CBDC um, to restrict uh, welfare benefits, okay? Let's say the federal government is, um, uh, you may, if, uh, there could be a, uh, some welfare reform where the monies that welfare recipients get from the federal government will have, um, that it will be programmed to prohibit them, let's say, from buying alcohol, okay? So your CBDC, you can spend it on essentials like food and diapers or you know whatever but you can't buy alcohol you can't buy cigarettes and um it, there would be restrictions on how you could spend that money there might be uh restrictions on uh stimulus payments from the government so let's say the government may want to stimulate a certain sector of the economy well you issue out a cbdc to all americans or to some americans and according to the program on that particular cbdc that those americans receive they can only spend that money on that particular good okay um so like with cash you can spend cash on anything actually digital bank money you can spend digital bank money on literally any good so long as it's within a legal market but with the cbdc you can program a cbdc so that you can only purchase certain goods with that currency you could deliver payments at at particular uh Time. So you could stagger payments. You could uh, issue um, inactive CBDC that could would be activated maybe after a certain time period or activated upon uh, the individual or the, the institution meeting certain conditions. Um, you could also deactivate a CBDC as a penalty for a business or an individual. Um, I don't agree that, look, I, I'm not saying that I believe these are benefits. These are what proponents will say are benefits of CBDC. Um, you could, in, a, in Keynesian fashion, stimulate spending by issuing CBDC with an expiration date. Um, you have to spend it by within three months. And after that, it's expired. Well, you're gonna spend that money within three months. I could stimulate spending if, uh, if the Fed believed um, or if the government believed that um, that they needed to uh, prime the pump. Um, CBDC, uh, you could require that it be spent only on certain goods. Um, another benefit of CBDC, this is a little, a slightly more of a persuasive argument. Um, CBDC transactions are fee-less. There is no charge involved, whereas credit, credit cards the processing fee for a typical credit card is one and a half to two and a half percent. Um, American Express is as high as three and a half percent. That's per transaction. That hits merchants and, and businesses pretty hard. Um, CBDC transaction, unlike credit cards, would be uh, entirely fee-less. Um, credit card processing. There's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of fees that go into 
into um, in a lot of different middlemen that are involved in those transactions. This is more direct, like cash. Um, another argument in favor of CBDC is that facilitates cross-border payments. At the present moment, cross-border payments, international payments, are, uh, are, are slow. They are uh, attendant with very high fees. Um, the average cost of sending a payment from the United States to another country is about uh, five to six percent of the value of the transaction. And so a CBDC would would lower transaction costs by by solving this issue. You could you could transfer money overseas costless without those those charges. Now pushing that sounds good, but pushing back against the idea. Um, Cross-border payments do need to be made more efficient. They should be more efficient. But this is nothing that the uh, private, private sector cannot innovate upon. This is nothing that the private sector cannot solve. And in fact, actually, the rise of stable coins has been in response to this uh, desire to uh, make cross-border payments more efficient. Um, Tether is one of those. It's equivalent to $1. Uh, last week it dipped down to 95 cents, but it generally stayed around the one dollar range. And um, stable, so-called stable coins, are pegged to the value of a fiat currency, or pegged to the value of a a, uh, a basket of currencies or a basket of goods. And stable coins are basically a, a private innovation, private response to this issue of cross-border payments. And so I would respond to this argument by saying, well, there are other ways to do this than creating this, this uh, monstrous CBDC. What about these private alternatives? In fact, stable coins have increased in use substantially over the last two years. In January 2020, the total supply of dollar stable coins was $6 billion. Today, it stands at $174 billion. And so um, there, are, there are alternatives here. Another purported benefit of CBDC is that the government could send money directly and immediately into the digital wallets of particular citizens. So you want your rebate check from the IRS. You don't have to wait three, four, five weeks. You can get it immediately. Um, uh, you know, there's another pandemic or something, and the government wants to send out Stimulus payments can do it immediately, right there in your digital wallet the day that they decide to do it. Um, uh, if UBI was ever adopted, which uh, God protect us from, the, from a potential UBI, but if UBI were ever, were ever um, introduced, CBDC, bam, you get your, you get your, uh, your payment. Um, another purported benefit of CBDC, um, this one's a little more philosophical, but the idea is that um, there's a problem that, that central bank money is declining, cash is declining, and digital bank money, commercial bank money, is rising, and that philosophically there's a need to uh, maintain sovereign control of the currency, wrest it away from the commercial banking system, and to have a a currency that is a liability of the central bank instead of the commercial banks. This is a weak argument because the central bank is run by the commercial banking system. Um, the Federal Reserve is a uh, is is run and controlled by um, the private financial industry. So it's kind of a moot point, but that's one benefit that's put forward. Possible benefit of CBDC. Um, another benefit that's put forward is that CBDC will prevent the risk of uh, cryptocurrencies from being uh, from widespread adoption. Again, these aren't my views. These are the views put forward by the supporters of CBDC. Um, this is also is a weak argument because CBDC is not a cryptocurrency. And so demand for crypto assets are not going to go down in the event of the adoption of CBDC because crypto has different a different utility it has certain qualities about it that cbdc does not have and so demand for crypto will continue but supporters of cbdc argue that that cryptocurrency will not be um will be deterred as a result but no doubt the number one argument in favor of a cbdc 
is that the United States must compete with China. Must compete with China. Now, China, as already noted, has moved rapidly on developing a central bank digital currency, a digital yuan. Um, China is interested in the internationalization of the yuan. They want to break dollar hegemony. Um, there's an argument out there that foreign CBDCs will become more attractive than the existing form of the US dollar. And so in order for the dollar to remain or to preserve its international status, the United States must answer this move by China by also adopting a CBDC. Now this argument seems attractive in some respects. Well, we wanna compete with China. China is clearly our number one geopolitical rival, if not foe. And so we can't allow China to, to undermine the dollar by outdoing us, by, by outcompeting us with a more modern 21st century currency. But there are some major problems with this. Um, Randall Quarles, who uh, was a member of the, Federal, of the Federal Reserve Board of Governors, retired a few months ago. He uh, authored a paper on this very question, and he said this, quote, it seems unlikely that the dollar status as a global reserve currency or the dollar's role as a dominant currency in international financial transactions will be threatened by a foreign CBDC. The dollar's role in the global economy rests on a number of foundations, including the strength and size of the US economy, extensive trade linkages between the United States and the rest of the world, deep financial markets, including for US treasuries, the stable value of the dollar over time. He wrote this paper last year. The ease of converting U.S. dollars into foreign currencies, the rule of law and strong property rights in the United States, also a bit shaky right now. And last but not least, credible U.S. monetary policy. I'm reading this right now. I'm like, ah, I don't know about this. But it, uh, credible U.S. monetary policy. None of these are likely to be threatened by a foreign currency and certainly not because that foreign currency is a CBDC. So basically the, the United States has the institutional economic framework to preserve its, its international, the international status of the dollar. And it doesn't matter if China has a CBDC or, or no CBDC, that doesn't change that fact. Um, Christopher Waller, who is a current member of the Federal Reserve Board of Governors, who's appointed under the Trump administration, he also opposes a CBDC. He said this, quote, I see no reason to expect that the world will flock to a Chinese CBDC or any other. Why would non-Chinese firms suddenly desire to have all their financial transactions monitored by the Chinese government? Good question. Why would you, do, why would you subject yourself to that? Why would this induce non-Chinese firms to denominate their contracts and trading activities in the Chinese currency instead of the U.S. dollar? And that's such a good point. Why in the world would anybody outside of China want to, you know, uh, well, you know, China has their Belt and Road Initiative. Okay, they have their Belt and Road Initiative. But outside the Belt and Road Initiative countries, why would any other country, like in Europe, for example, want to adopt the uh, a digital Chinese uh, CBDC yuan, okay? It, it just doesn't make any sense. That That's not happening, okay? Now, the, the thing that's threatening the U.S. dollar, uh, the, the hegemony of the U.S. dollar is not a Chinese CBDC. That's not what's, what's threatening it. What's threatening it is this, okay? This is what's imperiling the U.S. dollar as the uh, world reserve currency. So you want to know what's doing it is the, the U.S. national debt. Also, look at that, federal debt to GDP. Our federal debt to GDP right now is, is over 100%. It's been that way since, since the end of the Obama administration to the Trump years. And then look at COVID, bam, you know. So, so that's the threat to dollar hegemony. And uh, the increase of, uh, of the discrediting of the reputation of the U.S. dollar by the Federal Reserve by increasing money supply by over 40% since March of 2020. That's what's imperiling the dollar, not a Chinese CBDC. We don't need a CBDC to compete with China. We just need good policies to compete with China. And we'll, we'll 
you will beat China any day of the week with good policies, but we're, it, a CBDC is will do nothing to uh, <clears throat> to increase our competitiveness with China in this 21st century. Um, Randall Quarles said, quote, the dollar is already highly digitized. The Federal Reserve provides a digital dollar to commercial banks and commercial banks provide digital dollars and other financial services to consumers and businesses. Christopher Waller said that a CBC is, quote, a solution in search of a problem. And he's exactly right. We do not need a CBDC. Again, probably the strongest argument is the cross-border payments. You can do that in the private markets or find some other mechanism. You don't need a CBDC to do that. All right. So those are the benefits of a CBDC. Now, what about the dangers? What about the potential dangers and uh boy there are many <laughs> there are many um the government and the central bank the federal reserve will have significant or even total control over how and where you spend your money and again even if the rollout of it in the beginning is modest and limited in scope you've got the the infrastructure will be there okay the infrastructure will be there for um total control over your market and even social activity let's look at some examples okay, just the surveillance the surveillance of all economic activity the government would have access to all of it the Federal Reserve would have access to all of it. Every single transaction. The programmability of the CBDC is extremely problematic. Um, payments could be blocked to politically disfavored businesses. The Fed or the, the federal government could cancel a business. Okay. Um, Access to money could be arbitrarily suspended or deactivated. Look, for example, what um, Justin Trudeau did in Canada during the trucker protest. Suspended the bank accounts of protesters. The federal government or the Federal Reserve, they don't like what you're doing politically. They could suspend your CBDC. Even it could, it's in your digital wallet. Well, just suspend it or deactivate it permanently. Um, payments could be blocked or restricted uh, for for certain goods, um, controlling how your money is spent. For example, um, politicians they politicians could pass legislation preventing you from buying things that they don't want you to to have. Okay, they could um, guns, for example, ammo. They could restrict the they could program CBDC so that you can't buy guns or ammo with your CBDC. Um, sugar, you know, go beyond just, you know, firearms. Sugar, for example. Look what like Michael Bloomberg was doing in New York now, not too long ago. They could program CBDC maybe to, uh, maybe not outright prohibit your consumption of sugar, but to limit it. You have, you know, a certain allowance every week of how much sugar you can purchase or sugar products you can purchase. Oh, in the name of public health. Um, cigarettes, you know, oh, banned. Alcohol, restrict it or banned um, the CBDCs could be used to, these are all just hypotheticals, but very possible. You could see, you could see like a world 10, 15, 20 years from now operating like this. CBDC could be programmed to limit your consumption of meat or to limit your consumption of fossil fuels all in the name of climate change. It's a existential crisis. We've got to program the CBDC to fight climate change. Doesn't that, 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 does that sound completely like unrealistic? I don't think so. Okay, I don't think so. Actually, earlier in um, U.S. history, they didn't have CBDCs back then. But during World War One, the U.S. Food Administration had all sorts of, oh, eat more corn, oats, and rye products. Eat less wheat, meat, sugar, and fats. Meatless days, wheatless days, porkless days. Price controls. You know, um... They didn't have CBDC, but you could have you could do that pretty pretty darn efficiently with a CBDC. Um, use of your money could be restricted to uh, to essential goods. You can only uh, you can only buy certain. You can use your CBDC, CBDC only for certain goods. Um, 
another potential hypothetical um, in the name of stopping the spread cbdc's could be programmed to prohibit spending at social gatherings during the next pan pandemic okay oh everyone cbdc suddenly even though it's already in your wallet suddenly programmed overnight to to prohibit spending at social gatherings uh oh um or you're unvaxxed you haven't submitted your vaccination papers man i'm so glad i didn't get that you're unvaxxed um the cbdc could be programmed to prevent you from attending social events oh okay um and of course you know any essentials that the cbdc would be programmed to allow you to, to buy you know the, uh, it's essential essential is all defined by the government of course and obviously there would be automatic tax authority on every transaction It'd be very very easy and quick and efficient for the government to tax automatically any transaction via your cbdc um oh the, uh you know the keynesians they, they like the idea perhaps of uh expiration dates and and um and you know stimulating spending but what if uh what if economic stimulus meant that uh the cbdc and your wallet um shrank uh slowly over time a negative interest rate on your cbdc cbdc savings in order to encourage spending um, the CBDC could enforce price controls, price controls, and disallow users from spending too much on particular products. You have cash, like the old school paper currency. Oh, you can deal under the table. No, CBDC, you couldn't do that, could you? Couldn't do that with CBDC. But it's not just government control, corporate control. Private companies could theoretically program the wages they issue to their employees and bar employees from from buying certain products um to use kind of a cute example mcdonald's could uh make it impossible for its employees to spend their wages at burger king okay or coke could prohibit their employees from buying pepsi products but um maybe a little more uh hitting a little more close to home what if uh, a company decided um, that they need to quote combat hate and uh, and the wages that you receive from that company well you're not allowed to to buy products from canceled businesses okay who have taken the wrong position on a particular issue um, or you can't spend your wages for uh, uh, t for uh, t donations to a uh, to your church for example oh your church doesn't adhere to the to the prevailing orthodoxy so you're prohibited from doing that um you're not allowed to give to a certain company like samaritan's purse or something like that because they're uh, a company of they're a charity of hate okay all you know, and, it, and if a company if a private company didn't program their wages to prohibit spending in that manner oh you could just see the the media and taylor lorenz and um the twitter uh mob you know piling on to that company why do you allow your employees to use their wages to to donate to this hateful charity you know the, the imagination can run wild with this um cbdc will further the ongoing war on cash it you know uh it's essential that we that we keep that we retain the ability to spend money anonymously and the fed can say all day that they don't intend to replace cash with cbdc i don't buy it in the long run in the long run there's a there's a war on cash and cash is necessary for a free society you've got to have cold hard cash you've got to have anonymous payments in a free society you must have anonymous payments that is so vital and it's underappreciated we're so used to to having that option of anonymous payments the minute that goes away you're gonna you're gonna notice you'll you'll know okay you've got to retain the ability to have anonymous payments cbdc will further the ongoing war on cash also what private tech companies maybe i'm on one of them right now um you know that you know they're gonna bid for the federal contract and that in that company will grant will have access to your 
economic data. And then, of course, CBDC could work in conjunction with a future social credit system. You don't have the correct views. You don't have the correct. You haven't you haven't behaved correctly politically. Um, we're going to dock you. We're, we'll deactivate your CBDC or we'll we'll uh, reduce the amount of CBDC in your digital wallet. Oh, and CBDC would be great to, for the redistribution of wealth. Oh, imagine all that could be done in the name of equity with the CBDC. You could have just automatic transfers from one group to the other and it'd be a socialist dream. Of course, it'd be a, a, a freedom nightmare. Um, in short, the possibilities are endless with the CBDC. And again, it doesn't mean that all of it would eventually be utilized or that it would be done right at the outset. It wouldn't be done right at the outset. You think they would deploy, the Fed would deploy all this right away? No, of course not. There'd be a you would hope there would be a revolt. No, you, you introduce it slowly and, oh, see, it was not a problem. Barth, you know, look at, he was fear-mongering over there. See, none of this happened. Well, wait, give it another 10, 15, 20, 25 years, okay? Um, and, and then the other thing about this, um, I made a, a, a video about a year and a half ago on the Federal Reserve System. If you haven't seen it, you really ought to check it out. I, I described the Federal Reserve System, but... In that video, I offered a one sentence definition of the Federal Reserve. I said the Federal Reserve is a government created, government sanctioned private banking syndicate or private banking cartel charged by the government with upholding and furthering the public interest in the economic and monetary realm. Let me ask you this. Why would I support anything that's going to give the Federal Reserve more power than it already has? Why would I do that? Why would I support that? There's no way. No way. Okay. Okay, the Federal Reserve it has a sort of an air of, of a public institution about it. It was created by the government. It was sanctioned by the government. But at the end of the day, the Federal Reserve is a private banking cartel. It's controlled by the private, by big finance. Okay, and yeah, the government's charged it with this public interest. But more often than not, it's failed in that public interest. It's failed in that public interest. Look at the Federal Reserve today. The Federal, the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve's history is like one does one blunder after another since 1913 look at the federal reserve's history this is an institution you want to give more power to no thank you not doing it so um and then one more element of cbdc that's interesting to, to consider and thanks for hanging with me everybody i know this is a longer video but it's an important topic i wanted to just cover all the bases this is my definitive cbdc video um this is very interesting. And this is actually one reason why I'm, the Fed may not end up creating a CBDC. Okay? Because the Fed is essentially run by the private, the, the top private uh, banks in, in our country. Okay? It's a, it's a, it's a private banking syndicate. Um, CBDC has a real possibility of upending the commercial banking system. And if there's one thing that prevents the Fed from adopting the CBDC, this will be it. Okay? This will be it. Um, the CBDC essentially is a substitute for digital bank money. Well, what is digital bank money? Uh, banks rely on deposits to fund their loans. So when you use your debit card, that's a digital bank money, but that's your debit card, you have a checking account at the bank and the bank uses that through fractional reserve banking to, to expand its loan portfolio. Well, if CBDC, if, if there's widespread use of CBDC, that will reduce the aggregate amount of deposits in the commercial banking system. It will drive credit. Um, banks would have, to sh would have to shrink their, uh, contract their loan, loan portfolios. And if there was a financial panic, or maybe the beginnings of, of a financial panic, and you saw a sudden surge in CBDC holdings, like like prior to the panic, most Americans had their money in their bank account, and then the panic starts unfolding, and then all Americans begin rushing towards CBDC, that's essentially a bank run. That's a digital bank run. It's just they're not going to the bank counter to, to demand gold coin or, or cash. They're 
getting CBDC and it's and it would be very sudden and it would be very severe because it could all be done digitally. Okay, digital bank run would be we've never had anything like that. Um, and so that's a real risk actually for the commercial banking system. Now, as critical as I am of our commercial banking system, I'm very critical because the, the whole our whole financial I've done so many videos on this. Our whole financial system is 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 rigged in such a way to 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 benefit um, the elite institutions within the financial sector. Nevertheless, I'm not anti-commercial banking. Like I think actually commercial banks make sense. Um, if you see my other videos, I'm actually not opposed to fractional reserve banking. I think fractional reserve banking is entirely legitimate. I'm a free banking guy. Um, so, you know, as much as I don't like our uh, the, our current current commercial banking system, I'm not like chomping at the bit to just destroy wreck the whole thing. CBDC would would really pose some big challenges to that. Now that also goes for crypto any crypto uh, for for cryptocurrency. Uh, as opposed to CBDC, cryptocurrency, you have um, DeFi, decentralized finance, which I think is actually very, very promising. So this is interesting. I mean, may maybe uh, a, a, an upending of the commercial banking system would be good for the United States. The problem is, if we are to upend the commercial banking system in the United States, we need to do it in a, in a freedom-oriented fashion. We need to do it in a market-oriented fashion, not in an oppressive CBDC system of control okay so <clears throat> that's the video hope you enjoyed it share this video share this video i know it's long but you know i think people people need to hear this because there's this is a big subject and people need to understand the risk involved um this is not some cute project that the federal reserve is considering here no this is a danger to american liberty okay um and if it's adopted um americans will 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 within a fairly short time i believe um regret the adoption of of a central bank digital currency that's all see you all next time um hey i took the beard off what do you think <laughs> i i shave I, I saved that comment for the very end i didn't want to spoil this video with a beard comment in the beginning i shave it off every summer i shave the beard off i just kind of you know they say the great reset well this is a great reset and uh I'll, don't worry if you like the beard i always bring it back so i'll start growing it again in probably a month and and it will be nice and nice and long again by by september but anyway thanks for watching share this video see y'all next time bye